So, Jody, you had a surprise <laughs> happen to you, right? I did. <laughs> when, and this this was what day before yesterday? Saturday morning at yeah. seven fifteen. So, what were you doing? You were going to work? I was going to an estate sale before work. Uh, okay. What? Ha tell us what happened. Walk us through it. So approximately a mile from our house, quarter mile after I got onto the highway, um, the road kind of curves going uphill to a junkyard. I uh, hmm. came around this corner and I saw this flash of brown to the side of the road and my first thought was a baby deer, only because at that particular spot I always see deer crossing. It's that time of year for them too. Yes. So um, I started slowing down, but as it came out onto the road, I realized I was seeing something on two legs. Uh, and that's the weird thing. I don't remember seeing anything from the shoulders up because I was so focused on the legs because that's the part that was freaking me out, I guess. Um, yeah, the fact that it was bipedal. Right. Um, it did move very, very quickly across the road for being as little as it was. So it may have lasted only, what, four or five seconds, I guess, maybe. Um, That's still a long encounter. But it was long enough for me to notice that it was on the chubby side. And I don't mean fat. I just mean... Thick? Yeah. It wasn't skinny by any means. Um, the arms reminded me of a dwarf, the way their, their arms are not quite the same as ours, and their hands are bigger. In length or in... Yeah, you know how a dwarf's, I guess their forearms are shorter than ours. And so, so, okay. So you thought that if it was going to be compared to a normal human, its arms should have been a little bit longer. Yes. Okay. Like, from here to here seemed dwarf-like, and the hands seemed large for its body. Not like crazy large, just... Just large. Yeah. Okay. Um, the feet, everybody keeps asking me about the feet. <laughs> the feet seemed very proportional for a two-foot-tall being. They didn't seem large or misshapen or... Uh -huh. um, it seemed to be wearing a tunic outfit. Now, I originally told Jack, almost like a tank top type top that came to mid thigh, but then the more I thought about it, it almost had like a cap sleeve to it. It wasn't quite strapped. It had a little bit more material, but it didn't come very far down the arm. So just like a cap. So when you say tunic, you mean it's kind of like a short dress correct something like maybe a native american woman might have worn correct okay it wasn't heavy material but it wasn't like super flowy i mean it moved with the body very well mm. but it wasn't like t-shirt material or you think it was leather or maybe animal skins or? probably more than likely um, somebody, when I was telling the story to somebody else, they asked if maybe it could have been fibers, like, um, you know, grass fibers woven. To me, that wouldn't have moved as well, so I'm leaning more towards skin or, fur, you know, skins or fur. Okay, tell us um, more. So the skin of this being was, um, I called it saddle brown, yeah. reminded me of a Native American, and the outfit was a little bit in lighter color but along okay. the same brown um so by the time it reached the side of the road i slammed on my brakes and jumped out of the car because i wanted to see it better um i knew nobody was behind me i put my hazard lights on i left my car in the middle of the road <laughs> with my door open um got over to the side of the road and on this side, it dips down into like a ravine between two hills. And so I assume there was a game trail there because that's where I see the deer cross all the time. So I was kind of hoping I'd see it running down that trail, mm -hmm. but I didn't see it at all. I saw no movement in the brush. As little as this creature was, it could have been laying five feet from me and I may not have seen it. 
Right. Um, and then I may have stood. I may have stood there 20 seconds. I didn't want to leave my car on the road very long because people do fly up and down that road. Um, right. I jumped back in my car and called Jack because <laughs> I, I <laughs> wanted to call one of you guys, but it was 7:15 in the morning. I thought, man, I'm not going to wake anybody up, so. <laughs> <laughs> I called Jack because I knew he was awake. <laughs> yeah, Because I needed to tell somebody immediately. And from the moment I saw it until about 10 minutes later, I felt like my body was electrically charged, which could have been from adrenaline. But it was like my skin was all tingly. And I don't have a lot of hair on my arms, but if I did, I felt like it should have been standing up. Mm. That's how I felt. That's interesting. And I felt like I wanted to cry. I was really fighting the urge to cry. And during the day, if I thought about it too much, <laughs> I wanted to cry because I understand now why people don't want to come forward and tell their stories. Because my very first thought was, even Jack's not going to believe me. <laughs> I saw this well, little human running across the road. Now, you've been in the the cryptozoological realm for a while, but but you're 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 involved with the Native Oklahoma Bigfoot Research Organization, Correct. and you've been actively looking for Bigfoot. Right. But then this happens. What do you? I mean, what do you think? I mean, was this was little people even on your radar? Not at all. In fact. Um, because of the research that I do, it's, and I believe in Bigfoot, it's, you expect to see Bigfoot all the time. That's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. The little people story to me seemed more of a, not, not a myth per se, because it's not that I discount what the Native Americans are telling you, but it's harder for me to believe a little person than a 12 foot tall Sasquatch. <laughs> if that makes sense. Well, it does and it doesn't, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, have you ever known anybody that's seen a little person before? Nope. But, as I was telling people my story during the day, um, I'm the manager of an antique store in Prior, Oklahoma, and there's another store two doors down. And that gentleman came in the same day and was telling us about a possible ghost on his cameras mm -hmm. in their store. And so that's when my coworker said, well, tell him your story. So I did, and he immediately started laughing. And he said, well, my wife has seen one. I have seen some. And then this customer comes from the back of the store. She had overheard us talking. And she said, you should The very first thing she said to me was, you should have never got out of your car. And she was very disturbed about it. And I said, OK. And she said, you getting out of your car would have come across to them as confrontational. And she said, if you come to them confrontational, the story, I guess they believe, is that it steals your soul. Now, the, the indigenous folks, they have a lot of different stories about what these little people can do. And you know, most of the people that I've talked to and listened to, they're more, I guess you'd say, afraid or leery of the little people than they are the the Sasquatch people, so. And I find that very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, a lot of the stories are not positive ones. Right. So. That's what I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> so. You did the. You mentioned that the arms appeared to be shorter. What about the legs? Were they short compared to the, the what you? No, but they did seem just a touch bow-legged not Maybe, okay. much okay. but they didn't seem quite straight <laughs> and did it have anything in its hands was nope. it carrying anything no nope. and they run just like we do so if you're picturing somebody running across the road with their arms pumping like we do it was just like that it was moving as fast as it could and it moved fast really? i mean as small as it was, it moved very, very quickly. Wow. No shoes. And I, nothing on its feet. And I remember nothing from the shoulders up. 
basically, kind of, tunic, potato sack, yeah. Some kind of real primitive clothing. Yeah, yeah very simple. Just to cover yourself up, basically, I'm so assuming. So when you come pulling around the corner, was it already in the road, or did it emerge from the bushes or something? It was in the grass. And I'm always, you can ask my husband, I'm always looking for mm -hmm. animals all the time. He's amazed at what I see. for deer, because one, you know, not yeah. jumping out in front of her. Right. Really Right. In fact, a couple of weeks, what, not even a week ago, I came around that same corner and there was a fawn standing in the road. And so I'm very used to the deer being right there. Especially that early animal. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm always watching. But it was just in the grass on the side of the road and that's what caught my eye. It, I can't say if it was like moving at that moment, but I did notice something standing in the grass. And so my first thought was a fawn. But at the same time, my mind was arguing with me because it wasn't quite as tall as a fawn would be, obviously. Yeah. So the sensible side of me is saying fawn, and then there's another part of my mind that was saying, that's not a fawn, what is that? And when it stepped out on the road and took off running, that's when I was like, okay, that's on two legs. And that's all I focused on was the legs because I was, I just couldn't believe. Well, that's what the brain does is it picks something and it focuses on it. Hyper focus. I guess. Maybe because I, maybe I wanted to make sure it was what I was seeing and not an animal. And so I was so focused on the legs yeah. that I never, I, I mean, I have no memory of the head at all. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> same thing happened to me with my pterosaur sighting too so well um do you guys have any questions i've asked all the questions <laughs> i'm trying to think of any applicable questions so i don't get and there was no hair on the you know like it was furry or anything yeah i don't remember any somebody else asked me that bracelets or anything no nope. anyway. not that i registered yeah because she didn't notice the head you don't know if it looked at you or not i no. But all you know is it kept running. But, but my, my sensible mind says that obviously when I saw it step out on the road, I had to have seen the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I had to have seen the whole thing. But why am I not, why can't I remember that? Why does that? the brain work the way it works? I mean, I had to have seen the whole thing. Yeah. And it seems to me if this creature had known known you were coming around this curve, you would have waited in the grass, but he was already apparently wanting to get across the road just as. Correct. And your car's pretty quiet. It's right. not like you're chugging up this hill very hard. I was going about 40 miles an hour. Right. That's about right. what it's I do going up that hill. All new pavement there too, right? So yeah. It's that's a good point, though. I never thought about that. If it had known I was coming, it should have gone back into the woods. Oh, it's just been redone? Has it been redone right there? I'm not sure. Right. Working on it, yeah. Well, it kind of makes you wonder if uh, it crosses there every day or... Every well, other day. is this a routine that you so stumbled into? When I was telling my coworker, she has two people that come and clean her house. The wife cleans the house, and the husband helps with outdoor stuff. And they are both Cherokee. And she said, when the Cherokees came from Florida, most of them are here in the Kenwood area, um, which is just to the east of us here. But she said when they first came to this area, they settled about where our house is, that area. And that road is called Indian Springs. And so apparently... Is there, there a natural be, spring there? I have no idea, but there must be. Yeah. Uh, well, no, there is. If you come off our dirt road, before you turn down to go to the lake, there's that water that yeah, comes... Yeah, that flows pretty much year-round. It doesn't dry out too bad late in the season. But, so there's got to be more springs yeah, for right the road for that to be named that. Well, we'll have to. Well, 
Well, it's a good, clean water source. It might have something to do with the reason why you saw him there. Right. Did you get the impression that it was male or female? <laughs> Jack asked the same thing, too. No. No. Nope. Mm. A tail? Ooh, no. Not that I remember. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, not that I No. Mm. No, because when it was running and the tunic was moving with it, I would think that a tail would have messed that up, so no. Well, and just to be clear, the arms and the legs that you saw were not hairy. They were just regular skin. Yep, yep. Okay. A saddle brown color, almost like somebody who spends time out in the sun during the summer. Which they probably do. Right. Well, maybe what we need to do is go out and take a look at it. Um, I brought a yardstick so we can get an idea, kind of let you reenact it and uh, get an idea of how tall you really think it was. Okay. And uh, I'll stand on the side of the road and try not to get hit. <laughs> okay. So, and you'll have to resist your temptations to take me out. <laughs> So, but yeah, let's let's go out there and take a look and let's kind of nose around for it a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Roger that, see it. Okay, yeah. Just... Okay. This is the location. You said it ran that way? I'm not sure just yet. Right here's where it crossed. Well, I do not have any doubt that something. Is it me or does it look like something might have come through right there? Or something could have come through right there. Hmm. Golly, this is thick. Here it comes. She's coming the wrong way. Here she comes back. He's like, he's, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna call that good. <laughs> okay, what what would you say? Right there. So it was 24 inches tall. Okay, I was right. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Well, that was. Did it run like I was running? A little bit faster. I think it. <laughs> I think it was more athletic. I mean, it was shuffling. But did you look across the highway to where Oh it god, that's deep. That is so thick. There hell a freaking T-Rex could be living in there. That's a Yeah. You said he, he dove? Did it look yeah, like he... because it, it drops off so fast here, the other ones have to make a leap. But see, I ran here. See, see right there how it's kind of clear? Uh-huh. I was hoping that's where I was going to see him running. Right. But like I said, he could have been laying five feet away from me and I wouldn't have known it. There's surface water down here. Yeah. So there's got to be a spring down there. But he came from right over here where that trash bag is, yeah. or trash is. Yeah, we marked it with that box, so. Okay. Well, I mean, it would have taken, I mean, hell, it would take me three or four seconds to walk across this road. You know, it sounds like you're, he was moving fast, but just for his size. Right. Probably wasn't moving all that fast. Maybe not. It seemed very fast. 
you know, it's kind of hard to say. Wow, this this is definitely some woolly bush out here. There's anything could be out here. Anything. Wow, this place is. Did you did you guys notice the Bigfoot sign by the up the road by the guy's farm? Yes. Oh yes. So yes. There's several in the area. Jody is actually a longtime member of the Native Oklahoma Bigfoot Research Organization. She is a field researcher that helps that group cover Northeast Oklahoma. And for a long time, she's been looking for Bigfoot. But the last thing she ever thought she was going to run across is this little person. When she first reached out to me about this encounter, she said that she was actually shocked because she'd never even given any thought to little people in general. She had casually overheard people talking about them in Bigfoot groups, but it was not something that was really on her radar. I was really excited that she reached out to me and told me about her story and invited me to come up and do an interview on her. So Eric and I loaded up and headed that way. So if you or someone you know has had an encounter with little people, please reach out to us and let us know. And that goes for all the other types of cryptids out there. If you've seen something that's not supposed to be real, give us a holler and let us know. And don't forget to like and subscribe and share our material. We need all the help we can get.